In this example, we have a mass on a spring on a ground. So the spring has constant K and unstretched length L initial, and then it's pulled out here to state one at length of L and then released so it snaps back and its max velocity is going to be at the L initial when the spring is not stretched. So we wanna find the velocity at L initial after it's pulled back and released for no friction and for yes friction. So we start by drawing free body diagram. We have the mass. So we've got weight, mg, normal force going up. We'll have the spring force, k times l minus l initial. And then if there is friction, we'll have the friction force. Okay, then x needs to be in the direction of motion. So we can say that x goes this way. And then we need to figure out equations. So let's say we know that spring energy, that is gonna be one half times K times L minus L initial. And then kinetic energy equals one half MV squared Gravitational energy equals mgh. And then friction, work by friction, equals um, negative friction force times distance. But the friction force we can get from the free body diagram. So we know that here from some of the forces in the y equals zero, then n equals mg. So then friction equals mu mg. Friction force from static is going to be with mu s, and friction force from kinetic is going to equal with mu k. So if n equals mg, then that's going to be 3 times 9.81, which equals 29.4. And then the static friction is 0.4 times that, so that's 11.8. And the kinetic friction is going to be 5.9. So these are all in newtons. So then if we plug numbers into here, well, let's see, there's actually no gravitational change, right? Because there's no height change. So we can get rid of this one. And then we need to write the work and energy. So here, energy at state one plus work from one to two equals energy state two. Potential energy at one plus kinetic energy at one plus work equals potential energy at two plus kinetic energy at two. Okay, now at state one, the spring is fully cocked and the mass is not moving yet. So then we know that we have a potential energy from the spring. So we have that one half K L minus L naught squared. And then kinetic energy, at state one, there's no kinetic energy because the mass is not moving. So we get rid of that. And then we would have friction. So that's gonna be that 
negative F mu times L minus L initial. And then when it's crossing through this origin here, the spring is not stretched. So that means there's no potential energy from the spring. But we do have kinetic energy because it's moving. So one half m v squared. All right, but we gotta make sure that the spring is actually strong enough to pull the mass when it's fully stretched out. So for that, we'll do the static check. We wanna see if the spring force is greater than the friction force. So we'll have static friction here and compare to spring force. Well, the static friction force we got was 11.8. And then the spring is going to be 50 times L minus L initial, which is two minus one equals 50. 50 is greater than 11.8. So this means that the block will move. All right, so when we go back to here, we could put numbers in. So we'll say A is no friction. For no friction, then we have, we'll get, not use that red part, and then we just know one half K times L minus L initial squared equals one half M V squared. So then these one halves cancel and we get K times L minus L initial squared over M square rooted equals V. So that's gonna equal 50 times two minus one squared over three square rooted, which equals 4.08 meters per second for no friction. Now, if we do have friction, we'll solve that one. So we take this equation and then we can see that K times L minus L initial squared minus two friction force times L minus L initial over M square root all that equals V. So that's gonna be square root of 50 times one minus two times, in this case, we need to use kinetic because it's moving. So we'll say two times the FK, which is this 5.9. equals 3.56 meters per second with friction. So to recap, we drew free body diagram, figured out the different forces, including friction. And then we did the static check to make sure that the spring force is big enough to overcome the static friction force and pull the block. We assigned a coordinate frame with X going in the direction of motion. We could put the origin of that frame anywhere, but it's helpful to put it at the unstretched length of the spring um, or really at any of the specific states that the system reaches. So, but zero for the spring being also zero for the X is a convenient spot. Then we wrote the work in energy equation out, crossed out what should be zero, and put in formulas for the rest, 
then we solved out for velocity. 